for what you've got! Incredible! Power level 30,000! Amazing! His power level is increasing at an incredible rate! I've won this fight. You poor fool with the power I possess, you don't stand a chance against me. You're going to die just like this planet. It'll be your grave. But I'll give you a decent burial at least. After all, you're a Saiyan. Come on, is that the best you can do? You're amusing me. Don't give up yet. Kaioken! Beg for forgiveness. And if you're lucky, I might spare your worthless life. No! I made a promise to Gohan! I... will beat you! You fool, Kakarot. Listen! My name's Goku! Lady, the song of Rose City! Folk songs, folk songs. That's my horse? I can't dance now. That's my horse! Hey Phil. Yeah, buddy. You know, I want you to know I'm I'm still gonna finish that Mount Molomoa story. You take as much time as you need. I can't wait to hear that. You have ID. Where's your car? Mrs. forgot to get it serviced. Not the first time. Mind if we move this along? I've got an appointment. With Frost. Of course. We'll have a car escort you up to the main house.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe, also known as Jay-Z Productions on YouTube. Welcome to the Boys Podcast. I got a special guest. What is your name, sir? Uh, my name is Peter Kalamis. Welcome. Okay, I got a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay, here we go. So, uh, what are you uh, doing during these times of quarantine? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you got to repeat that oh, one more time? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, what are you uh, doing during these times of quarantine? I think, like everybody else, just trying to pass, uh, pass the days. I mean, we have a young daughter, so she uh, keeps us occupied and she's homeschooled. So getting that out of the way every day is uh, a bit of a challenge sometimes. And then after that, just, you know, mm -hmm. video games, movies, uh, cleaning the place up, home improvements, whatever you can do, really. I think we're all in, in the same boat and um, it's not fun. You know, you try to make it as fun as it can be, but it's... Uh, it's frustrating. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's been just well, yeah, quarantine, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what made you want to become an actor, and who was your biggest inspiration for acting? I think my earliest inspiration was probably it was probably a show, uh, the Carol Burnett show. Um, so when I was very very young, I, uh, my parents would let me stay up and and watch Carol Burnett, mm -hmm. and she was amazing. But the other actors around here, specifically like Tim Conway, was like a comedic a genius. And uh, I was just fascinated that, that they could jump from character to character and make people laugh. And to me, that was like a superpower awesome. that I wanted to attain in, in some way, shape or form. So for me, it started with uh, comedy and imitations and things like that. And that later in life led to uh voice work and uh on camera work and things like that but that was the initial launch off that i remember as a child saying that you know sometimes i, I think every kid has that moment sometimes it's a fire engine goes by in front of your house mm -hmm. and you go that's what i want to do and for me watching that show it was that's what i want to do that was a good show. i actually uh, watched a couple of episodes actually it's a pretty good show the carol burnett show yeah it I was Players and and they would make each other crack up and, and it and it just it brought you into their world like mm. they were laughing and you were laughing with them not just at them mm. and it was just uh it, it just made you feel like you were a part of it it, it was like being a live comedy show where their laughter um, induced more laughter with you and vice versa mm. uh, and it was really cool and it was done in front of a live audience which you don't see a lot of in today's television. It was kind of a magical time of TV. Uh, what is your favorite acting role that you have uh, done for like a film, TV show, play, etc.? Mm -hmm. uh, I would have to say my most recent series, uh, Beyond, where I played a character called Yellow Jacket, um, who was, he's a little weird. Uh, it's tough to nail down in one explanation, but he was kind of a... A corporate uh, fixer, if you will. So he's the bad guy that would get rid of people, make people disappear. Um, he was, uh, he had a very strange kind of look about him. He was dressed up kind of like a 70s kind of, uh, I don't know, club goer with a bright yellow leather jacket, leather <laughs> jacket, and the 70s shades. Uh, and he was just strange and odd. And he had this duality of life where he would, you know, bury somebody in the forest and then run back home to his wife and mm -hmm. young daughter, and they had no idea what he was doing. So, as far as the depth of character, that 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 was probably my favorite thing ever to do. But um, when you say favorite, I mean it, that I don't want to discount some of the other things I've got to do mm -hmm. over the years because they they were amazing experiences, and 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 no way am I downplaying those, like uh, working on Stargate Universe. Mm -hmm. um, and then getting into the animation stuff, the uh, Goku, Rolf, uh, being involved with Ed and Nettie, uh, all sorts of things. I, I've been fortunate to have done a lot of things. So um, there's a lot of great memories to look back on and, and things to appreciate. Nice. I like that. You did really good as that character, Yellow Jacket. It was really, I really liked it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if you don't mind, can you like get a quote from Yellow Jacket? If you don't mind. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at this. Look what I got. Oh, here we go. 
I don't know if this is going to be a perfect quote, but I'm going to try to remember. Only when one is about to die does he truly understand what he has to lose. Dang, that was so oh, good. Go. That was there so go. good. Thank you. Oh my god, I love that show, Beyond. I missed that show. Too. It was so good. Oh my god. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. I had the glasses right here. You got me the right place. Yeah, perfect timing, I'm in right? My, uh, I'm in my uh, studio slash office here, so doing some recording today. Perfect timing. Let's go. Cool. Okay. If you could pick any role in any movie, TV show, play, etc., what role would you have loved to portray? But obviously, obviously, you didn't portray it. We wish you did. Mm -hmm. uh, probably be uh, probably be Han Solo, Star Wars, because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And mm -hmm. to me, that was like the best role ever on film. That was the coolest mm -hmm. guy, cool ship, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he got the girl. He had a, he was a pirate. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's not to like about him? That was a good. I love Star Wars too. Like, oh my god, good trilogy, good movies. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it, it would Star Wars would be my first one, but the second one would be I I, I love the mob movies, all the Godfathers and. Sopranos and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just find those characters so fascinating because they do the most awful things, mm -hmm. yet yet justified in their own mind as if they're doing the right thing uh, or the proper thing. And, and it's just such a disconnect of good versus evil in their own head mm -hmm. that it makes them terrifying um, and interesting at the same time to watch. <laughs> Over the years of your career, do you still uh, keep in touch with your co-stars? Director and directors? Uh, I do. I do. Uh, me and Terry Klassen are both uh, are, are real good friends. He was a director of Ed and Eddie. Uh, uh -huh. And we've uh, written a couple of things together that we've been uh, trying to get going. Uh, and a lot of other actors I see in passing, you know, like uh, Sam, uh, Sam Vincent, um, uh, uh, people from from Stargate, Louis Ferreira, uh, mm -hmm. Lou Diamond Phillips, I've run into still a, a bunch of times. Jennifer Spence, um, uh, Matt Hill. Yeah, yeah, you know, as much as you can. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I've, I always have like really cool experiences. You, you really do. If you, if you're doing something for a long time, you, you do uh, create a bit of a family kind of an atmosphere where you do you truly really care about one another and you truly really do become uh, unless they're an asshole. Which is rare, very rare. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we all get along really good. And, and when you see each other, you're legitimately glad to see each other. Okay. Uh, who was the coolest person you've worked with? And yeah, that one. Oh, that's <laughs> a good question, actually. Coolest person. Um, I was saying, being a hockey fan, I'm mm -hmm. assuming with a Canuck shirt on, mm -hmm. um, the coolest thing for me was I got to do a, a, a Chevy van commercial with Bobby Orr. And um, we're talking, I mean, if you know anything about hockey, it's hockey mm -hmm. legend. I mean, this is the equivalent of doing a commercial with Michael Jordan uh, okay. to give you a basketball equivalent or, I don't know, Tom Brady in football. I don't know what to compare it to, but mm -hmm. they're one of the most famous hockey players on the planet. And, um, he was the nicest guy in the entire world and he was telling us like hockey stories in between takes and mm -hmm. took photos with us and I, I got a his famous flying goal that's cool picture mm -hmm. against st louis he signed that for me and, and it was one of the coolest days ever on set you know fame hasn't changed me well maybe not bobby but the world's become rather complicated but you can simplify your life with a chevy astro You've got everything you need standard like the most powerful v6 air conditioning and the best towing capacity in its class and it's the only van hi, with standard seating for eight any less and you couldn't get all your uh, fence to the ring hey it was in the contract but there's other people that that um you know you know you get to work with and you show up sometimes and, and you're yeah, you know what? You kind of fanboy. Yeah, I mean, you, you, sometimes you go to set and you're kind of fanboying over who you get to work with. Like, yeah. I, uh, I've got to work with Angelina Jolie, oh, uh, Brad Brad Pitt. When he was starting out, he did a uh, pilot show in Vancouver. Uh, Salma Hayek, Morgan Freeman, wow. Justin Timberlake. Um, there's been some really cool people. 
uh, along the way. And one thing I did early on in my career is I kept my my sides, which the if if you don't know, when you get the set, they give you a small stack of paper about that big. It's like mini letter size, like quarter of a letter size, which is all the information of what you're shooting that day, all the scenes and all that. But it has a cast list on it, and I I kept every one of those from when I first started. So there's times where I look back at those. And uh, I see the cast list of who I got, got to work with that day, and um, a, a pretty cool mementos. That's awesome. I like that. Awesome. Yeah, that's so many people you work with. It's like so. You know what I mean, like, well, you know what I mean, wow. Yeah, yeah. So cool. And uh, you, you really do look back, and um, I, I got to work with. I can't say who it is yet, but it's a show I just did on Quibi mm-hmm. called The Now, and it hasn't been released yet. But I got to work. Uh, with a certain actress who uh, was a bit of a dream come true because I'm such a fan of her work and her characters, and um, I, I got to, I can't I can't say who it is yet. Yeah. Shows, <laughs> yeah. I wish I could, uh, but I, it was one of these where I was scared to get a photo with her or ask. Yet the makeup person was like, "No, go ask her. She's uh-huh. super cool." I was like, yeah, so okay. cool. and I already worked with her a bunch of days. She was su- super nice, but sometimes mm-hmm. you don't want to bother them. Mm-hmm. Um, but she obliged, and I have these a uh, couple of great shots of this amazing actress. And once the show comes out, I'll uh, I will post them because oh. I will brag that I got to work with this person. <laughs> that's, so, that's cool. What director taught you the most, and which director would you love to work with? Peter DeLuise. Okay. Um, pretty quick answer. He came from such a, an amazing acting background. Mm-hmm. Um, with his father, uh, Dom DeLuise, but that wasn't really the, the connection. He he was the first guy that hired me for uh, Stargate, mm-hmm. and then he went on to direct a number of Stargate Universe episodes, and um, he's just a really fun guy, but he would give you little pieces of advice. One piece of advice he gave me I never forgot was um, we showed up once, we're doing a scene, and he goes, uh, okay, where in the storyline, where did you just come from? Mm-hmm. And uh and I didn't know mm. um, because you, you film it so out of order that, mm. you know, you don't really know. I knew my scene. I knew what was happening in the scene, but I didn't know directly where I came from. Because sometimes you walk through a door and you walk into a room, but those scenes were shot two weeks apart. Mm. And he goes, you always get need to know where you came from and where are you going to in the next scene? And I was like, yes, I do. And I never made that mistake again. Awesome. It's a really cool experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What uh, director would you love to work with since you liked working with? The uh, who would I like to work with? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, from a legendary perspective, you know, you got your Steven Spielbergs and mm-hmm. but take out with DT, Oh. Uh, okay. right now would be, I think a really cool guy to work with. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you are an actor, what would your career be? And like, while well, they're interested in hobbies, do you have besides acting? Mm. You know what? It's weird. I love uh, woodworking, which is <laughs> maybe something you didn't expect. Mm. But I, in high school, I took woodworking class, and I just love building things and fixing things. Mm. Uh, I'm quite handy with my hands as far as using tools go. Uh, my wife is the same way. She's fearless. You know, um, we'll jump into new things, you know. It, it, once I went to give you an example, once in our home, I left for the weekend to do a comedy show and I came back and she had opened up a new entrance <laughs> way to the living room. I'm not kidding. And drywalled it. And I was wow. like, wow. And she had never done it before. So she's kind of fearless that way and also taught me to kind of jump in and do things. And if you make a mistake, well, then you learn from it. And next time you'll figure out how to do it better. Wow. So uh, jump in, do it, get your hands dirty, you know? So, uh, Mr. Clam is the woodmaker, right? <laughs> the woodmaker, yeah. Oh, nice. Tables, chairs, you know, whatever you need. Okay, okay. Hire him today. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Uh, favorite band and type of music? Um, when I was growing up, it was The Who. Ooh, okay. Uh, you know, kind of harder rock kind of stuff, but really, really amazing band. Uh, going back in, I mean, I love the Beatles, but more recently, I'd love uh, Foo Fighters would probably be up there mm-hmm. for me. Um, okay. White Stripes, Foo Fighters, that type of stuff. That type of stuff. I like uh, something with a little more energy to it. Mm-hmm. Cool. See, I like Queen. You know, like we are Champions, we Rock. Queen's amazing. Amazing. 
you know that's the thing i mean oftentimes i'll catch myself where i'll be in the studio and i'll do a few you know audition records and stuff and then i'll mm. click the youtube and start playing some videos and then you know i realize an hour and a half later i'm still listening to music and uh <laughs> i think we all need to listen to a little more music that's mm. what i'll say i um yeah i think you forget about the benefits of just sitting down and letting this song affect mm. you and uh we try to get as much music playing in the in the home as we can nice Okay. Uh, hopefully, uh, when things get back to normal sooner rather than later, any uh, projects you, that you still have in the works? Yeah, I, I'm uh, waiting to hear back on an animated series Ooh. any minute. <laughs> right now, mm-hmm. I had uh, two callbacks for a new series, and it's a it's a pretty cool one. And um, in the final uh, few people being considered for this particular part, and uh, so I'm waiting to hear back. And um, and beyond that, I mean, there, there was a few on camera auditions that I went uh, went for before the pandemic hit mm-hmm. that haven't made a final decision yet. So um, who knows? Maybe there's a pleasant surprise waiting for me at the other end of this from a work perspective. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm just anxious to get out there and, and start auditioning and getting in front of the camera and uh, working. You know, I think we're all I, after this whole thing, I think we're all going to appreciate work a whole lot more. You know, yeah. no matter what you do, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy going to work. You know, leaving the house and and um, you know, getting outside more and just working and being productive and uh, putting your mind to work because it's uh, it's tough sitting in small quarters and we're all going squirrely. So we you know we've had enough of this. Obviously, we got to keep everybody safe and we will do it. We should do it for as long as we can. I mean, I'm so shocked that some states are opening up the way they are and people are rushing to bars and. Mm-hmm parting it up as if nothing is happening. Um, it's unbelievable to me to see because, mm-hmm. you know, it's not about you sitting there and getting, ordering a few beers and rubbing shoulders with people. It's about if you get sick mm-hmm. and go to the hospital, those poor people that have to put their lives at risk, taking care of your ass makes me angry mm-hmm. that, that they have that kind of disrespect for the people that potentially have to save their lives. Yeah. So a little, little respect would be nice. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, what advice would you give younger people who also want to become an actor? Um, you just you gotta go for it, and and by that I mean sometimes you physically have to go for it. You have to go somewhere else for it. And that, you know, if you want to become an actor, you gotta go for it. And by that I mean you, sometimes you physically have to go for it. Like if you're living in the middle of the prairies if you're in Canada or in the Midwest somewhere in the States and there isn't a big acting hub where you are mm. then you need to go to where that is um, so it's you know it's kind of like you, if you want to get into the oil industry and you live mm. in the States well you're probably gonna end up in Houston somewhere okay. uh, if you want to uh, become an actor it's probably gonna be LA or New York you can do it in other places and maybe get a few credits under your belt but ultimately you have to go to where that product is mm is centered um but in the meantime you know get an acting lesson uh get a voice lesson Mm -hmm. um hear yourself in the studio for the first time because you will be shocked you know everybody that has never put these on and and talked in front of a microphone in a in a a sterile booth Mm -hmm. is shocked to hear their own voice it's kind of like you know hearing your own voice on your outgoing voice message sometimes you're like that's what i sound like (laughs) um it's the same thing. You get out there, experience it, and if you like it, go for it. But but realize that it's a uh, it's not a job that is um, a direct action and reward mm. type of scenario. Where I went to acting class, I graduated, or I finished my course. Uh, now where's my gig? Mm. You know, it doesn't work that way. Um, it's not like if you have a degree and you're gonna get a job. It, it, that's not always the case. So mm. you got to be patient. You got to have a thick skin, and uh, if, if that is your dream, stick with it. Okay, good advice. Thanks. If you can do, can you do like the voice of Ralph and Goku really quick? Sorry. <clears throat> what are you looking for, right, boy? Thank you. Okay. And then Goku. And, and oh. Goku is more like this. Let's go. Get out of here now. <laughs> Thank you. There was a lot of that going on for the record. By the way, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there was some. Uh, it, sometimes we would we would record, mm-hmm. and then we would end off the record mid-fight. Mm-hmm. So you know, mm-hmm. Goku's in the air, 
smacking around piccolo or something I'd go, ah! mm. you know and then uh they, we would come back a month later to record and it's like oh where were we um <laughs> oh here we die ah! that's where we just start where we left off awesome well, fights would last for months <laughs> that's crazy well uh, anything you want to promote or shout out um like i say the, the look for a show called the now on quibi okay. uh it's produced by the Farrelly brothers who i mean just came off of an academy award but amongst other things uh Dumb and Dumber, and uh, on and on and on. I mean, the Fairly Brothers, everybody knows them. Um, and it's they're just an amazing bunch of guys. Uh, both brothers are fantastic. And I did a project for them last summer, and they, they asked me to be a part of this this one in the, uh, this part in the now. And uh, it was, an, you know, it's one of those people uh, when they ask you to do something, hey, are you available for? Yes. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even need to finish the sentence. You know, I'm, uh, I'll be there. For those type of guys. Okay. That's cool. Okay. Uh, and I'm uh, also link your Instagram, your Twitter. I'll link it in the description. Yeah. Instagram um, is uh, at Peter Kalamis, uh, as is Twitter, at Peter Kalamis. Uh, I try to keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, the, you know, Peter Clam, Greek guy, 6714. It's nothing like that. It's just uh, at Peter Clam. It's funny. When I when I I was late to sign up to uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. I, I signed up when I was doing Beyond, and the other cast members were very active in it. And uh, I had somebody squatting on at Peter Kalamis already uh, oh, when I got there. And he had photos. It, it made it look very legitimate. I mean, I looked at the site, and I was like, did I do this when I was sleeping? Because this is all pictures of, you know, some of them are my pictures. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and the people at uh, Freeform, overheard me saying that and mm -hmm. they just went what somebody's squatting your name and I went yeah and they go we're on it and it was I, I swear to god it was like half an hour later uh -huh. Instagram was like here you go yeah Instagram contacted me and said it's available here you go because it's your name and so they had a lot of pull and made it happen immediately it was, it was pretty, pretty pretty great right <laughs> that's awesome yeah wow I, I hate when people like do that like in person like you know what I mean uh, yeah, it, and even after I got on, it was a couple more. Um, some of them are a fan site is something different than imitating somebody. A fan site often they'll say fan site, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that that's you know that that's honoring what you do, and you, I think you take that as a compliment. Um, but pretending to be you, that's a different thing. Yeah. And I had friends that were for uh, friending them and stuff and following them back and I'm contacting them going, yeah, that's, that's not me. That's not me. So don't, uh, don't lend money to Peter Kalamis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for watching. He's been a wonderful guest. Thank you for coming. Mr. Kalamis. Thanks very much.